Welcome to the Bucket List Project podcast, a weekly show that talks about stories from my pursuit of nomadic lifestyle around the world, interviews with interesting people I met in this journey, and a generous dose of thought-provoking conversation around travel as a lifestyle choice. If you love to listen on topics revolving around travel, then this will be a perfect companion for the ride to office, your morning jog, or in general when you're winding down for the day. We have new episodes releasing every Friday, so do share and subscribe to our podcast and get your weekly share of travel inspiration. The Indian Gen Z is uh, looking to travel in a completely different way than the previous generations. They are bold, they are fearless, well-earning, adventurous, and they keep travel at top of their priorities. Their travel narrative is broadly shaped by four trends in my opinion. Number one, of course, is the social media. Uh, They are incredibly active on social media and they are constantly exposed to the images, videos of people traveling to amazing places around the world. This, in turn, inspires them to dream about their own travel and to start planning their own adventure. The second is the influencers. The current generation is heavily influenced by travel bloggers, bloggers, and uh, Instagram influencers. These people on social media um, are heavily followed and have a great fan base. And people watch their videos to get ideas for travel destinations, activities, and in general, travel tips. These influencers are nothing short of celebrities. They have a strong individual brand and a cult following among the young audience. The third aspect, in my opinion, is the FOMO or the fear of missing out. Today's youngsters are constantly worried about missing out on new experiences. This is also one of the main reasons why they are so interested in travel. They want to see the world, experience all that it has to offer Uh, You know, the trends like 30 countries by 30, chasing a bucket list and being the first in the circle to experience something unique is a driving factor behind their travel choices. And the final, uh, you know, trend, uh, in my opinion, is a desire to learn and grow. I see a silver lining in all this travel madness. I believe this generation is also very interested in learning about different cultures and meeting new people. They believe that Travel is a great way to expand their horizons. And I met a lot of people who said that travel was life-changing for them. Every brand is now focusing their energy to target this very specific segment. And uh, various user research studies are emerging to better profile this audience group. Some of the interesting anecdotes I came across recently is that Gen Z is the largest travel segment in 2022 compared to even millennials or Gen Xers. That is quite telling given they have just entered the workforce and their propensity to spend is supposed to be lower than millennials and the Gen X. Second, a typical Gen Z traveler profile looks like this. He He or she is a solo traveler, budget conscious, backpacker who loves to trek, camp, uh, loves cultural immersion, and meeting new people. To me, this sounds like we are getting somewhere close to the Western backpacker profile. And almost 65% of them are planning a trip already in the next six months or are expected to travel to an off-the-beaten path for an experiential break from routine very soon. These stats show that Gen Z is a major force in the travel industry in India. They are more travel hungry than any other generation and they are shaping the future of travel in this country. Reading all this made me feel jealous for a moment because for us millennials, this was still a dream when we were young. Not that we are too old now, Uh, you know, age is just a number, but somewhere it makes me, you know, happy too because... Uh, We as Indians are now aspiring to become global citizens and make the entire world take notice. My interaction with many tourism boards around the world reflects the same sentiment 
where they consider India among the top three markets strategically for tourist arrivals. While I might not identify as a Gen Z, the travel bug in me believes that I have an opportunity to experience the world as joyously as they would do. I for long wanted to do a podcast uh, on creating a travel wish list dedicated to the free spirit of this generation. You know, put a world map in front of me and search all the corners of it to bring in front of you a wish list that I would be proud of. And thankfully, I'm not alone in terms of doing this right now. In this podcast, I have some company to put this list together. I'm Srinath Shankar, your host, a party master scuba diving instructor, co-founder of Pick Your Trail, India's fastest growing leisure travel brand, a digital nomad and a slow travel proponent. Today's topic of podcast is creating a Gen Z travel wish list. In this episode, as I had mentioned earlier, I'm going to be joined by a special guest, Mr. Neil Patil, the founder of Veena World, avid globetrotter and a leading voice in the Indian Indian travel industry. Uh, His country count as of uh, today is about 41 countries and he is very soon looking to beat his wife who is on 47 uh, in terms of list of countries that uh, she's visited. Together, today we are going to embark on this wish list creation uh, journey. But before all of this, uh, I have laid down three ground rules for uh, Neil Patel to kind of build this list. Number one, the list will have an increasing progression of travel budget, reflecting the increase in income levels as a Gen Z progress in their age. Second, the list will have a mix of experiences, right from adventure, party, cultural immersion, and experiential travel in general. Number three, we will try covering all parts of the world and preferably avoid popular pop culture references in our list. It is supposed to be a very unique wish list and not lifted off from movies or things that this generation is already well exposed to. You know, as uh, people who have traveled a lot, it also pushes our boundaries to think harder. But before we get started, let's welcome our guest. Hi, Neil. Finally, we get to meet thanks to this podcast. Our listeners would love to listen in your journey in the industry and how you identify yourself as a traveler. Thanks a lot, Srinath. I'm actually happy to be here. Like, um, thanks for considering us and thank you so much for the kind words. Well, the journey in the travel industry has been one of 10 years and it was always a thing that travel is often thought to be or back then travel was often thought to be a luxury which only the 1% or the top 5% of the population really enjoys. So the ethos that we wanted to come into travel was that, you know, we wanted to make travel affordable for one and all. So that's a little bit about us. It's been one of 10 years. We've had a long journey where we've learned a lot. Every traveler going on a trip uh, makes us learn new things, makes us learn and unlearn a lot of things. And to describe myself as a traveler, I would say um, if you were to check my Instagram, I'm really curious about stuff. I often think of even flying as not getting from point A to point B, but flying for me is also an experience. So I'll spend a lot of hours trying to find out which seat should I take on my Bombay Delhi flight, even if it's an indigo flight and all seats appear the same. And um, that's why for me, I want to experience different things. I want to know why there is that beeping sound on a plane after takeoff. What does that really do? How, um, why is a plane always uh, landing into the direction of the sea and not from the sea, etc, etc. So it's a very curious kind of traveler where wherever I go to, I want to understand the uh, interesting stories about a place. I want to understand why certain things happen and share these interesting stories and this knowledge that uh, I managed to get because of this curious mind that I I feel I have or this curiosity that I have with as many travelers as possible because I feel travel helps us um, enhance life. Travel teaches us a lot of things. Travel helps us understand different cultures and when you understand different cultures, there is a natural progression of you 
understanding from those different cultures and really doing well in life and making memories with your loved ones so that's why uh, for me right from the time i'm at the airport my travel actually starts and i really like food so for me food is a big part of the experience i really like planes i really uh, like experiential things so everywhere i go i'll try to do something off beat something new and of course as we go along in this podcast we'll uh, i'll mention a lot of the things that i've had done like i have done in the past and also a lot of the things that are still on my bucket list and you know i'm just like slowly taking them one by one and nice that's very inspiring to listen to and in fact uh, when you spoke about uh, you know uh, the flights uh, choosing the seats and all of that i am guilty of that as well to be very honest you know for me um, it's not the price of the flight ticket alone i am checking which aircraft that we are going to be flying uh, what is the model of that aircraft what kind of seat structure will be if it's a business class what kind of uh, seating arrangement is going to be there all of these is something that i take a lot of time to kind of understand because we typically spend about you know 6 to 7 hours in, or 8 hours in a long flight journey i want that also to be a great immersive part of travel right so i completely hear you uh, over there and uh, very interesting uh, uh, thought that you have um, and obviously it's also a great example of uh, how a brand is evolving when a young leadership is at the helm and i'm uh, pretty happy that uh, uh, where you are and where ravina world is at this point of time uh, wishing you all the best for that uh, but uh, let's uh, get started in with the task in front of us yeah before before uh, you know getting started i wanted to break this wish list down into uh, three phases of uh, life right uh, when uh, the current young generation is uh, getting into their first job and they in their minds are always uh, thinking of uh, doing something special with their paycheck and uh, given the fact that all recent studies saying that travel is among the top 3 discretionary spends for the current generation i am pretty sure their first independent travel is also something they are dreaming in their minds so a lot of first in travel if i had to build a wish list for a lot of first in travel how would that look like so that's the first uh, uh, you know section of the wish list the second uh, section of the wish list uh, that uh, i want to kind of uh, discuss with you and kind of build together is um, to signify a phase in the younger generation's career when they have spent about 3 4 years uh, in the system uh, and built their uh, experience they've got their first promotion probably their first six figure monthly paycheck milestone and generally they would have traveled a bit by now so their aspirations for travel would have kind of increased right to signify this growing self confidence and um, shaping of an independent mind um, how do we kind of build a wish list for that kind of audience and the final phase of that wish list is uh, where uh, you know they are getting into their first team management role they are uh, part of that high disposable income group or uh, they are uh, you know basically having some very big milestone travel uh, you know listed in their uh, wish list it could be you know turning 30 it could be going for a honeymoon or it could be even sponsoring the trip for parents their first international trip for a lot of people that is a big milestone right uh so signifying signifying this growing affluence uh, i wanted to build a uh, you know wish list for that kind of growing audience also so yeah so these are the three types of audience that i you know uh, i thought that we should kind of uh, split our wish list um i would uh, you know want uh, you to you know take the lead and kind of uh, you know uh, help us navigate and build this wish list you know uh, given that you've been to about 40 odd countries your experience would uh, definitely come uh, a lot more uh, into action today so i'm hoping for uh, listening to very interesting uh, places that we could uh, kind of discover and build this wish list right so over to you 
I think uh, Shrinath, going into bucket list, right? I think we could start off with the first one where, you know, you're right out of college, right out of university and you're like, you know, starting to create your travel bucket list because the feeling of travel comes in every day, right? You open Instagram suddenly in the morning, you wake up, you're not checking the newspapers, you're opening Instagram and suddenly there is this FOMO that is being created because someone in your social circle is doing something fun. Now, that is why it has become a thing where everyone starts making a travel bucket list and that bucket list gets modified also on a daily basis in my opinion. And that is why even if consumption all across India may increase or decrease during a period, the consumption of travel or the want for consumption of travel just keeps increasing at least in our minds. So that is why um, if I were to look at the bucket list and you mentioned that I've been to a little more than 40 countries. Um, I would say one country that we realized during the pandemic is beautiful is our own incredible India. Because um, often before the pandemic, it always used to be a case where, okay, like, you know, I will go to Himachal, I'll go to Rajasthan, I'll go to Kerala. And then suddenly I realized that, okay, I want to get out of India and I'll go to Thailand or Europe or somewhere else. But pandemic gave us a good op- the pandemic gave us a good opportunity to really stop and take a look at incredible India. And that's why uh, for your first set of bucket list where, you know, you're just creating a bucket list right out of university, right out of college, first job, first paycheck and all of that. I will like to concentrate on incredible India. So, you know how often uh, you're just somewhere sitting on a plane or something and suddenly you just start discussing travel and often people ask, oh, do you like the beach or do you like the mountains, right? And that's a question that often gets asked. But whenever I'm creating a bucket list for myself or someone else, I often don't look at mountains and the beach as two different things. I look at it as four dimensions where there is snow, there is sand, there is the sea and then there is the sun. Yeah, so to explore that, I guess let's start with the snow. And when you talk about snow, the first thing that would come to anyone's mind, and that is but natural, is Kashmir. But I thought when we are looking at a very offbeat bucket list, very unique bucket list, instead of adding Kashmir on that, I decided to list down Auli. Auli, which is in Uttarakhand. Now, often when people talk about skiing, people talk about going to Gulmarg. But I would say if you really want to ski, if you really want to enjoy great slopes, Auli is a place that um, often people should go to. It is known as a Himalayan ski resort. Now, one of the unique things about it is that it is quite far to get to. Dehradun is the airport that you fly into. And then, you know, there is a approximately eight to nine hour drive that takes you to a place called Joshimat. And from Joshimat, you have to take a cable car that takes you up to Auli. Now, Auli is often known as the ski skiing capital of India. Um, it's a great place surrounded by oak forests. You have the Nanda Devi peak that you get a um, great view of. And it is also close to the Valley of Flowers National Park, which from the period of June to October has the highest number of flower species from found anywhere in the world. So um, Auli was first on the list when I was to talk about snow. And the reason I said say that is because when someone's just getting out of university or just starting their job, they're still young. And skiing as a sport is not that well penetrated in India. So as you grow older, the sense of fear that you're going to slip and fall off the mountain increases. So if you start learning how to ski earlier, then later on as you progress through your career, I feel that, you know, you'll take up to skiing or snowboarding, whatever um, you like. But to learn, you either go to Gulmarg or Auli, but I decided to add Auli because I thought you know, why not? It's often known as the gateway to the Himalayas. So snow for snow, I was like, okay, let's bring in Auli. So that was like the first destination that I had uh, in my head. The four dimensions that I mentioned, the other two, I'll take them uh, together. One is sand and the next one is the sun. Now, whenever you talk about the sand, if there's one state that comes to your mind in India, that's Rajasthan, right? And Rajasthan is often known as like, you know, a state where you have adventure, luxury, history, culture, everything intertwined into this amazing, uh, like, you know, web of stories, interesting stories. So when I talk about a second item that should be on your bucket list, this is a place which is about two hours from Jodhpur, four hours from Jaipur. I was privileged enough to actually go there uh, in 2021 with my wife, Heta, and um it's known as Chhatrasagar Bird Sanctuary. And 
you know often all across india i'll come to um, the sun bit a little later but across india you're doing a lot of safaris but often bird safaris or just going to a bird sanctuary is not given as much importance so chhatrasagar is a bucket list during the months of november december and january because more than 200 bird species so i'm saying 200 bird species but tens of thousands of birds that you will see in the months of november december and january in chhatrasagar now chhatrasagar is a bird sanctuary in itself there are a few luxury hotels over there that you can definitely check out but uh, most of these hotels or most of these trips to the sanctuary will give you a pair of binoculars and um, you just sit in a jeep or hop into a boat and you can go on a nice boat ride around it because it is not surrounded by civilization all that much it also is often known as a place where you will find the darkest skies in india and if you get the darkest skies you know staying here in mumbai or bangalore or uh, anywhere else in the metro cities you don't even see stars in the sky just because like you know there's a lot of light uh, that's why many of us <laughs> many of us haven't even seen shooting stars in our lives so even for me the first time i saw a shooting star ever was when i went to chatrasagar so um a great place for stargazing at nights great evening sundowners that you can do over there so um when i would talk about the sand and adding a list on an, an item on the bucket list i would say chatrasagar would be my go to uh place i guess um you know speaking of being young and so bring in my third item on the list that is you know when the sun is out something that really starts becoming popular are the national parks of india because animals then come near the water bodies and you can definitely do so the third thing i actually had on my bucket list is when you're young you are okay driving long hours you want to like enjoy something and for many of us a sighting of a leopard the sighting of a lion the sighting of a tiger should definitely be on the bucket list i'm i personally i'm not a safari freak or a safari drive freak as much but over the last um few months i've had the chance to do many safaris and i've realized that okay like you know this can be a lot a lot of fun because you're like trying to find that one tiger or that like one sight of a tiger or and then you just go looking for it so the third thing on my bucket list was actually um from the period of december to may may you can have different national parks in india uh, on your bucket list and speaking of national parks there are like so many like the oldest national park in india that is jim corbett national park known for its tigers leopards wild elephants if you want to see a like lion you can go to gir national park if you really want to do great safaris looking for tigers leopards uh, the wild dog the samba the jackals there's kanha national park there's pench national park there's also the one horned uh, rhinos and um, the panthers that you get at kaziranga national park then there's bandavgarh national park that is also renowned for its tiger safaris so when i'm saying add it to your bucket list this is not one item you could do like multiple of these items uh into the bucket list and one of the coolest things i feel about national parks in india is that they are very strictly and lawfully protected which means you're entering into an environment that has been away from human activity for a long long time so i feel like you know the national parks in india are a sight to behold in themselves so that was like the third thing i thought you know when you were talking about sand uh, one one in my wish list always is been uh, to go to orissa for the uh, olive ridley uh, you know migration that happens uh, every year uh, it's the largest in the world yeah it's the largest in the world uh, that happens uh, once a year and it's a, a sight to behold you will see 10 th- th- thousands and thousands of uh, olive ridleys coming to the beach nesting over there and laying eggs hatching them and then going back to the sea it's truly magical almost like right out of a bbc documentary so that's that's been definitely one such uh, you know wish list for me and it so happens that there is a, a you know mangrove forest or uh, very close to that as well uh, where you on record the largest reptile uh, rec- recognized by guinness uh, book of world record the saltwater crocodile bigger than the ones that you see in australia 
is uh, supposedly uh, found over there so i thought i'll just you know kind of sneak it in the wish list super so now uh, you know um, i've got my first paycheck i've gone skiing to ali i've gone bird sighting and sky uh, dark sky uh, uh, you know sky watching in uh, chatrasagar and i visited a lot of these uh, national parks now you know i have got my first promotion 3 4 years now i am earning a six figure paycheck and my aspirations are growing as a traveler how do you build my wish list coming to the second bucket list right now you've progressed in your career you've reached a point where uh, like you know you can spend a little more you want to experience a little more so for the first item on that list there is a place in china and of course after the pandemic still china is very closed but i would say this place should definitely be on everyone's bucket list it's known as jiangjiajie like z e c h n g i a j i e and jiangjiajie is where the entire storytelling of avatar was imagined and those mountains which are pencil shaped mountains and you know it's just like hundreds and hundreds of these quartz sandstone pillars that you can see and one of the mountains over there is officially now renamed as the avatar hallelujah mountain it's a place where you know of course you say that oh in china they'll build anything so what they've done is you fly into beijing or shanghai or you know uh, you and then from there you have to take a flight into jiangjiajie from there you have to drive an hour to uh, a place that is known as jiangjiajie national park but more uh, locally it's known as the wulingyuan national park now it is a unesco world heritage uh, site you'll go there you will only see chinese tourists which means no one really knows about it in my social circle i have not found anyone uh, who has been there yet but you know this was an again a bucket list thing me and my cousins were like okay where do we want to go let's go to china now china everyone goes to shanghai beijing xi'an and we were like okay we have to do something else so we found this place went there we didn't know what was going to happen you go there and you have to go into an elevator now they've built this elevator also in such a way that the elevator is right inside a mountain and it takes you up like assume that you're going about 30 odd floors high and suddenly the elevator is brought outside of the mountain so that you get a view of these thousands of pencil shaped mountains in front of you and uh, it's it's like you are seeing is believing and you can go up the elevator and then trek down and that's what we also did it's a long long uh, trek about 15 20000 steps so your calorie count um, will be on point if you do that so the first thing on my list was jiangjiajie uh, there is also the jiangjiajie glass bridge if on instagram you have seen all of these people on a glass bridge or glass bottom bridge getting really scared crying and all of that that uh, yeah that that is that and then you must have also seen a mountain which is which has a hole in the middle and there's this land rover oh yeah it's a huge uh, red bull campaign also happened around that i know exactly exactly so that is also in jiangjiajie so when you go to jiangjiajie you really get to see this and this is nature at its best you will take this off and this is like actual memory where you're just celebrating life in front of you it's i like so that was that was the first thing that i would really put on the list well moving on to the second thing i really love japan and you know everyone tends to go to japan during one period that is cherry blossom and no wonder cherry blossom is very very uh, like beautiful now i had the privilege of going to japan for the first time in my life in the year 2015 if i'm not wrong and i realized that this is a country which is so technologically advanced but at the same time is so still stuck in the 1990s also that i've been there every year since barring 2021 and 2022 those years i've been every year since because there's nothing like it if you want food there is so much but if i were to tell you about my food checklist that i give everyone who's going to japan there is uh, sushi and ramen are the first two things but japan 
is such a place where you need not go to the expensive restaurants you go anywhere you're going to have great food and if i were to just name 10 things on my checklist there is sushi there's ramen there is okonomiyaki which is the potato egg pancake there's um the takoyaki octopus balls there is um the kaiseki meal which is like a japanese thali there's tempura which is the fried thing um if we were talking about sweets there is the japanese cheesecake and the list goes on and on and on i would say japan should definitely be there on the bucket list and to speak of a, of different festivals that happen if you like gaming there is the akihabara cultural festival that happens there there is the tokyo ramen show that happens there is also the sapporo snow festival that happens where there are ice sculptures and all of that so i would say japan has to be a place which you visit multiple times one thing that was that is still on my bucket list in spite of so many trips is actually climbing uh, mount fuji because um, that is something that has eluded me but let's see maybe sometime japanese people they love to trek and if they see a mountain the joke is that if a japanese sees a mountain he wants to climb that mountain uh, no wonder it has rubbed off you also <laughs> And the amount of frequent travel that you to j- do to Japan, I'm sure you, one of the days you are going to do it. Great. So you've taken us now uh, after my first six uh, six figure paycheck. You've taken me to Japan. Uh, you've taken me to China. Uh, and um, now you know uh, I'm nearing uh, uh, a peak of my career. I am. I've become a you know team manager, manager team. i have milestones coming up for me okay it could be my 30th birthday uh, it could be my honeymoon or it could be me gifting uh, a trip to my parents also right uh, so how do you go about building a wish list for me um if i were to build a wish list for you i will look at see if you're a working professional you want to spend as much as less time processing visas all the time and um that's why i often put australia on the list because one great thing australia does is that australia gives you a 3 year multiple entry visa now when i speak about australia i often tell people that don't plan to visit australia only once plan to visit australia multiple times because if you think that okay australia is very far i'll just go once i'll say don't think that way the reason you have that 3 year visa is that you are able to visit it multiple times once you get the visa it's done and australia is the fourth largest country in the world if you visit it only once you're probably doing it injustice because anywhere you go you will find something that will blow your mind someone could drive up from sydney to brisbane that's also something that could be on your bucket list you could drive up from brisbane to cairns that could be on your bucket list now i was talking to my friend raina and i was discussing with her uh, a queensland bucket list and we came across this one point in australia which is the northernmost point in australia i can't get the name right now but if you look at the map of australia if you, and the northernmost point of australia will be a tip now if you stand at that tip you are standing at a point where you are on a beach and from that beach from that very standing location you can see a sunrise and also a sunset and uh, you may not often see that unless you're on an island in the maldives right because you've water everywhere you can look left look right but that was quite unique but because it's so big that is uh, something that is there one thing i'll mention none probably not many in india have actually done that but one thing that can be on your bucket list if you like trains is hopping onto a train called the indian pacific in australia Why is it called the Indian Pacific in Australia? Because it goes from Sydney to Perth. It is one of the longest train tracks in the world. It is the longest straight line track in the world also. Because as you look west of Australia, it's just desert, and then finally you hit Perth. So in Perth there is the Indian Ocean, and in Sydney there's the Pacific Ocean. So this train, known as the Indian Pacific, connects both of these. and of course when you're going from sydney you go through blue mountains broken hill you stop in adelaide you have the barossa valley wine tours and all of that it even stops at a town called cook in uh, i think it's either south australia or western australia exactly which state it is in i'm i'm not really sure but the population of this town is 
like just four people live there so uh, it's a very bucket listy item can be expensive but um, i just thought like i'll mention it because not not many people know i i like watching youtube videos on reviews of different things like you know we discuss planes plane reviews train reviews and all of that so many people said that this is a train journey and come here thinking that i'm going to tick this off my bucket list it's not going to blow you away here it like you know left side me ye dekha right side i saw this and all of that but it's going to blow you so that's why um it's something that i thought i'll mention and that's how like australia also many of our travelers have gone like six eight times just going for city breaks to different places so i think australia should definitely be on that bucket list interesting um you've been to antarctica why don't you talk about a bit about that because if it is not there anybody else's wish list i want it to be in my wish list so uh, you know just out of uh, selfish reasons i would want you to you know add that uh, i'm nudging that into the wish list <laughs> well um in antarctica i went with my parents and my grandparents so that is good enough to tell you that anyone can really uh, go there there are three ways to go to antarctica one is from hobart in australia one is from south africa and one is from uh, south america you can fly there and you can take a cruise there if you really want to experience antarctica because you're a traveler who likes experiences i will say whichever point you choose to go from take the cruise there the reason i say take the cruise there is because what we did was we flew from mumbai to buenos aires and from buenos we went to ushuaia ushuaia which is the southern which is well was then the southernmost city in the world but there was a town in uh, chile um which was a town and then chile was like oh let's make this a tourist attraction let's classify this as a city so that became the southernmost city in the world now so ushuaia is often known as the southernmost city in the world so yeah like you board the cruise from there if you're thinking the cruise is a luxury cruise you will be mistaken if you really want to do a good antarctic expedition you want to hop onto an expedition ship when you're go when you leave ushuaia and start sailing through towards antarctica you will be passing a uh, a water body or like a large body of water which is known as the drake passage the drake passage is known to have the second or third most choppiest waters in the world but your ship your ship is built for that when you're going on an antarctic expedition know that the one and a half day that it takes to cross uh the drake passage is going to be a very eventful where you're going to either be having sea sickness tablets or you're going to be puking your gut out but uh after the day and a half when you spot the first iceberg everything is forgotten and then they often play a game on the cruise where you know on what longitude and latitude will the first iceberg spotted be and whoever wins gets something and once you go get to antarctica you get to something known as the antarctic peninsula and then the south shetland islands as you would have guessed penguins penguins all the time if you're lucky you will see orcas or killer whales and seals and if you're even luckier you'll be able to see a kill in the waters so um that is something and w- what really happens on the cruise is that every morning you go on to your zodiac boats and you go on an excursion you might o- you will also step set foot on the antarctic continent and you will there's a post box post office there you can send postcards to your loved ones you can camp there for a night which is one of the excursions and I'm glad you re brought up Antarctica because global warming is ensuring the ice is melting. So back in back when I went there about nine odd years ago or something, they had told us that over the next ten years, Antarctic expeditions will be regulated and curbed. So every year, smaller and smaller number of tourists can go there. So that's why if you want to do it, you have to do it sooner rather than later. one thing you won't spot there and i don't know people keep asking me polar bears polar bears are in the arctic and um antarctica is more the mountains so yes antarctica is like boom should be there on that bucket list and uh, did you do that uh, dip in the water that uh, is a ritual over there yes it's called the antarctic polar plunge 
and um you know when like you there are two ways of doing it they either take you to a black sand beach which is volcanic ash and on that beach and like you know you run into the water or if they feel it's okay they tie a rope to you and you jump into the water let me tell you that polar plunge is something you take off the bucket list but you will realize that um the water is so cold you can't be in the water more than 5 seconds like you know i thought that okay like i see all of these people freezing i'll just do some 100 jumping jacks and then get into the water nothing helped <laughs> it was uh, as um as cold as you can imagine it to be but it is something that it sh- that should be there lovely super so you know we have we have uh, traveled at least about uh, 10 to 12 years in this you know short uh, conversation of the last 30 minutes right uh, from my first paycheck uh, i've gone skiing i've gone to national parks then um, you know i'm getting confident uh, you know i've got my first promotion six figure che- check uh, in my work you've taken me to china you've taken me to japan then uh, once i have the money to splurge on Uh, experiences that uh, you you spoke about doing the cross of australia and then you t- uh, took us all the way to antarctica that is quite a bit of a wish list that uh, colorful wish list i would say and no wonder that uh, having uh, been to about 40 odd countries uh, your wish list is uh, you know uh, very very interesting otherwise um, you know uh, you wouldn't uh, believe when i say this Uh, I didn't step out of India till I was 29 and I didn't take my first flight till I was 22 and uh, the only um, uh, uh, I didn't visit Taj Mahal till I was 26 or 25 so I am a very late bloomer when it comes to travel uh, but um, you you kind of uh, definitely uh, I traveled a lot uh, in terms of like the number of countries so pretty glad that we could have this conversation super thanks a lot this was a super uh, fun conversation and i'm pretty sure our listeners are also going to be first uh, writing down uh, some of these in there as part of their wish list and uh, hopefully we've inspired them enough to kind of uh, write one wish list if they've not started till now uh, and uh, hope they enjoy this conversation So thanks a lot Neil that is uh, very very uh, uh, gracious of you to you know come on this podcast and share your experience and help us build this wish list Thank you so much Sheena it was a pleasure talking to you over the last 30 minutes and hopefully we've inspired people to at least create a wish list not only for 2023 whatever is remaining of it but uh, the next year and many more years to come so thank you so much for having me This wraps up the episode of the Bucket List Project podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode and the conversation on crafting this wish list for Gen Z. Do you think you're already ahead in this list and knocked off few items or you're yet to start? Well, it is never late to start something good and hope this podcast inspires you to move in that direction. If you liked what you listen to then please to subscribe to our podcast which is available both in Spotify and Apple. See you next week and until then have a great time. <music>